What's up? Long time no vlog. Um, <laughs> today is Friday and I actually, I don't have a lot going on today. I don't know, I just haven't vlogged in a very long time and I just felt like maybe today I would vlog a little bit of my day and kind of catch you up on just like what's been going on. As I said, it's currently Friday. It's like a really cloudy, rainy day today, which I feel like it always is when I vlog because I'm always complaining about it. <laughs> but this whole week has been really sunny, really warm. It's been so nice. I've taken like walks outside every day so far this week, uh, which has been really nice just for exercise and for mental health and all of that sort of stuff. And as much as I like like the cozy, rainy kind of feeling, I just find like as I get older, it makes me so tired. I woke up this morning, I was feeling productive. I was like, yes, I'm gonna get this done and this done and this done today. And I'm gonna have time to do this and whatnot. The day kind of just started and I just felt myself losing energy. And I can only guess that it's because of the weather. So I'm gonna eat lunch now and I'm gonna take my vitamins and hope that helps. I'm literally one of those people now that every time I go to the doctor or any sort of appointment and I have to make like small talk, my first thing is like to mention the weather. <laughs> I'm like, oh God, I used to make fun of those people and now I'm one of those people. It's great, I love it. <laughs> also, because I wasn't vlogging, I don't think I ever got to tell you, I went and got dipping powder, like a dip powder manicure last Friday. I'd had multiple people recommend it to me and I kind of put it off just because I hate when my nails get long. And when you get dip powder, it's like it's supposed to last close to a month, I hear. <laughs> um, and I like that it makes my nails feel stronger, but I can already tell they're growing out quite a bit in just a week. So I'm kind of like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make a month out of this. However, I did notice yesterday one of my nails was chipping and I was like, wait a minute, it hasn't even been a week yet. What's going on? I'm trying to decide if I wanna just live with it for a couple of weeks <laughs> or if I should just bite the bullet and call the nail salon and ask if they have like a policy for something like this because it was $40 and it's supposed to last for quite a long time. So I don't know, I said that very weird, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if they have like a policy for fixing these or if it's gonna cost me a bunch of money. I'm gonna have to call and figure that out, which is my favorite thing to do. So I'm gonna put it off by making lunch and just chilling for a little bit. Hopefully we can catch up a bit today and I don't get too exhausted and just waste the whole day sitting on the couch. I've plopped myself on the couch and I think I might have a hard time getting back up. <laughs> I mean, I got like ready and everything this morning and then sometime between then and now, I just got really tired and I don't, I don't know what's up with that. I did take a blog photo um, and uploaded a blog post that was technically supposed to go up last week but it went up today, um, so I'm technically a week behind what my plan had been. <laughs> I uploaded a post all about what I'm calling like my spring wardrobe rules. Just kind of with everything that's been going on with my life right now, I've been so bad about spending money and just like going out and buying clothes and like online shopping like a nut. And it's been really bad and I've noticed that it's bad, but I've been struggling to not do it. So I've kind of set myself these spring wardrobe rules, which are just like five things that I'm going to try to keep in mind and I'm going to try to keep up with in the next few months. Let me know if you also have issues, like specifically issues with like retail therapy, running to shop when like you're feeling down or you're feeling anxious or just like sad because I feel like one of the easiest things for me to do anyway when I'm feeling down is to go on social media and like look at different bloggers and Instagrammers and all these cute outfits and stuff and it makes me feel better and then I'm like oh that's cute I need to buy that and then I buy it and then the next thing I know there are like four packages on my front door and I've spent a bunch of money on things that I don't need so if you do that and you found a way to stop doing that or at least do better let me know in the comments i said in my blog post that like if there were a browser extension that every time i was about to buy something it popped up and was like do you really need this think through this for a minute do you really need it 
I feel like I would download that in a heartbeat. As far as I know, that thing doesn't exist. Therefore, I keep buying things. All right, I've been waiting for this moment all day. It's dinner time. Any guesses on what I'm making? I'm gonna give you a couple more seconds to take a guess. I am making pizza. <laughs> so if you guessed pizza, you'd be correct. The only thing is, I don't know if I have the right cheese. I mean, I have Italian five cheese, but it expired in January, so. Maybe I'm not having pizza. I have sauce, I have pepperoni, and I have crusts, but I do not have non-expired pizza cheese. Well, this kind of ruined everything. This is the moment where I sit here and I contemplate whether or not I want to put other clothes on <laughs> and go to the grocery store and get cheese. So I decided instead not to go to the store and instead to eat chicken nuggets because you know what, sometimes life is like, you need to be an adult and you can just be like, not today. Today, I'm not gonna be an adult. And today I decided I'm not gonna be an adult and make my very adult pizza. Instead I'm gonna be a child and eat my very childish chicken nuggets. And just to make things more complicated, after I just, you know, went on a rant about being a child instead of an adult, I'm going to be an adult and do the dishes. You know, maybe the true moral of the story <laughs> is that there's a middle ground somewhere that most of us probably live in. Um, we just don't have a name for it yet, but we should. I guess young adults would be the thing, but it's not really like a term that we use other than in books, in my experience. Anyway, dishes. <laughs> down and tell you guys about a little thing that I'm doing. As you may or may not know, my 24th birthday is at the end of this month and every year we kind of have this weird thing with me and my family and friends where they never know what to get me and they tell me that I'm hard to buy for and they ask me what I want for my birthday and I tell them that I don't want anything and it just becomes this whole big ordeal. So this year I wanted to do something different and you probably see it on like Facebook and stuff all the time where people like ask for donations for their birthday. So I wanted to do something kind of similar to that but that lasted a bit longer than just my birthday and I also wanted to pick a charity that I felt really passionate about but also that my family and friends and everyone I know could essentially, theoretically, get on board with. And basically I'm asking for donations rather than birthday gifts for my birthday this year. After doing a bit of research, I landed on Charity Water um, and I picked it for four main reasons. One, most importantly, I think water is just our most basic human need. You can fix illnesses, you can improve the economy, you can feed the hungry, um, but you can't really do any of that well unless you have clean drinking water at the end of the day. 
And Charity Water's sole mission is to find sustainable, clean water solutions in developing countries. I mean, just the fact that like 663 million people, one in every 10 people, lacks access to clean, available drinking water is baffling to me. Like, literally our bodies are some massive percentage of water and some people just have to walk hours to find that clean water that they need to drink and eat and clean their clothes and all, I mean, <laughs> just thinking about like how much I use water on a daily basis to do laundry and to shower and we have clean waters in our toilets for God's sakes. Like, we have clean water literally everywhere and some people just don't. Two, they have a 100% donation model. So for all those cynics out there, <laughs> and I know some of them, that don't like to give to charities because they just don't know where their money's going and they don't know, you know, what actual percentage of it is actually going to help the cause that they're donating toward. Charity Water is 100% transparent. Every penny you donate goes directly to help people get clean drinking water. They've functioned this way since their inception. They have one group of people that fund all of their operating costs, you know, salaries, travel, all of that, and every penny that you donate to help give people clean water actually helps give people clean water. <laughs> Three, they prove it. So I made a donation last week uh, to my own campaign, which I'm going to tell you about in a minute, um, and I immediately got an email that said I was going to get frequent updates about where exactly my money was going. No matter how much you donate, whether it's a dollar, whether it's a hundred dollars, whether it's a hundred thousand dollars, you will get actual real life updates about where your money is going and what projects your money is funding. So you can actually see the results of the dollars that you're spending, which I think is really cool. And four, they partner with local organizations. So I actually was listening to a podcast, which I'll link below, where the founder said something along the lines of like, they don't just send a bunch of white people over to Africa to fix the problem. Like they're actually funding Ethiopian people in Ethiopia to run the projects and to actually, you know, build the process of getting clean water to these communities. They're forming committees, they're training mechanics, they're working with local governments, all of these things to ensure that A, the projects are sustainable and B, that the communities can actually uphold them. So in the past couple of weeks since I decided to do this, I've been reading up a ton on this charity. Um, as I said, I listened to some podcasts with the founder. Um, I'm actually like listening to his book on audiobook at the moment. And I'm just learning so many facts and stories that have just kind of blown my mind about the people that have donated to this charity and the people that have been helped because of this charity. So I'm gonna like spout a few facts at you. Um, I hope that's okay. <laughs> As I was going through their website and reading about this charity, I think the thing that stuck out the most to me, that was like the most baffling kind of fact to me was that more people die per year from contaminated water than from all forms of violence across the world, including war. And that fact was just kind of shocking to me. I mean makes sense logically but you just never hear about it because you hear so much about violence and war and poverty and hunger but not so much in my experience about contaminated water like you don't hear that women and children spend hours and hours every week walking miles away from home just to bring clean water home to their families you don't hear that girls are missing school a week out of every month because their schools don't have proper toilets therefore they fall behind and eventually drop out. And I just never really thought about how all of these problems that you hear about in developing countries kind of all really stem from the fact that they don't have access to this basic human need of clean drinking water. And while all of these side effects, so to speak, are terrible and cruel and awful and need solving, wouldn't it be better to solve the root problem than to just continuously try to tackle the side effects. Simply having access to clean drinking water gives communities more time to focus on income opportunities. It makes it easier to grow food. It makes it possible for women and children to have a life, essentially, other than walking to get water. So as I said, I'm pledging my 24th birthday to Charity Water this year. My birthday is at the end of the month, but the campaign will last through the end of June, I think, 90 days, starting at the beginning of April. So you'll probably hear from me about this a few more times, <laughs> but I encourage you to check it out. If it sparks anything in you, give what you can. It doesn't have to be a lot. 
I've put a few links in the description for you if you want to find out more about the charity um, or if you want to go ahead and donate directly to my campaign. I'll leave that link in the description as well. Also, just thanks for listening to me ramble about this for a minute. I know how annoying it can be to listen to people kind of ask you to donate money, but I also think it's a good reminder because I've noticed in times where my life is difficult or my life is stressful, um, it's really easy to just focus on myself. But I have found that when I take the time to think about things like this, um, it makes me realize that my problems are nowhere near the problems that other people are dealing with. And the absolute simplest, easiest thing I can do is take the money that I would spend on like a Starbucks cup of coffee or a movie ticket or whatever it is and give it to someone and potentially help save their life. So anyway, sorry to get heavy at the end of this video, but I hope you guys are having a good week. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you very soon with another one. Bye guys.